Hey, it's Chris Nichols here from Bow River Trout Fitters, and I want to talk to you today about how I like to set up my nymph rigs. You know, on the Bow River, you have to be able to adapt to many different ways of fishing. I love streamer fishing. I really enjoy dry fly fishing, but more than that, I like catching fish. And so nymphing is not only something that I also find very enjoyable, but it is very productive. Now, nymphing can at first seem like a really complicated way of doing things, and I know a lot of people have their own ways that they like to set things up. I'm gonna show you how I like to do it. I think it's simple, it's straightforward, and it is effective. So, step by step, let's get right into it. Now let's start with the leader section. And again, you can certainly make these yourself. A lot of people like to use straight mono, but I do like a tapered leader. It's simple, it's clean, and it does help those nymphs turn over a little bit. So we want something strong. This is a seven and a half foot leader in 2X. You could even go a little bit heavier than that if you want. Now from there, I've got my leader. I'm gonna tie it on to a swivel. So at the end of that, I'm gonna go with one of these small 30 pound test swivels. Now what I like about this is it provides a little bit of extra weight to get things down, but it also keeps things from tangling up. And most importantly, we're gonna tie in fluorocarbon next. The swivel gives me a way to have fluorocarbon attaching to the swivel and not tying into the mono where you might have some issues with knot strength. Now I personally like to use uni knots when I tie my stuff, but you can use clinch knots, whatever works best for you. Uh, so I've got my leader tied to one end of the swivel, now I'm going to switch to fluorocarbon, and there's a lot of reasons for that. You know, first off with nymphing, we're trying to get those nymphs down deep and quick, and one of the best things about fluorocarbon is that it sinks. Okay, now mono, it does have a, a buoyancy to it, and that's just counterproductive when you're trying to get those nymphs down. On top of that, the fluorocarbon's strong, it's abrasion resistant, and when it's underwater, it's basically invisible to fish so it's what I prefer to use for the nymph rigs it helps okay so I've got my leader tied now directly to the swivel now I'm gonna put on my fluorocarbon and I'm gonna go with a 12 pound fluorocarbon here so I'm gonna tie that right to the swivel I'm gonna tie about 18 inches so it's about a foot and a half and that's gonna make this seven and a half liter now basically nine foot liter with this on here which is just about the right size that we want for fishing so again another uni knot I'm gonna attach this, uh, this 12 pound fluorocarbon on here and then we're gonna go straight to our leader fly. Okay, so I've got my swivel about 18 inches above the first fly that I'm going to tie on. And again, I'm using 12 pound fluorocarbon to go to it. So I'm going to tie my first fly on directly to the end of this fluorocarbon leader that we've created now. And again, I'm just going to use a uni knot. Now, I generally want my heaviest fly to be the point fly so that it gets down nice and quick, and then lighter flies can free float beyond that. Uh, I like a lot of weight on there. Uh, I'm using a stonefly nymph right now, but certainly you could go with smaller nymphs too. And something like tungsten bead heads, for example, get those down even quicker. Now, here in Alberta, we can fish up to three flies. So I could have my first point fly, then go to a second fly, and even a third fly. Now, I've got right now 12 pound fluorocarbon going to this point fly here. If I then add another fly, let's say 16 inches to two feet below that, I'm gonna go to a lighter pound line. I'm gonna go to a 10 pound fluorocarbon in this case. And then if I have my third fly, I could go even lighter. It does a few things. First off, it helps to just let those smaller flies float a little bit more freer. But also, if I do hook up on bottom with one of those bottom flies, and I do have to pull pretty hard to try to get my rig out, if something does break, I should only lose those bottom flies, not my lead fly or my whole rig. But I like to tie, again, just with uni knots, right to the actual hook shank. Rather than doing tag ends and attaching my fly off these tags, I like to go right to the hook shank because first off, it's simple. I find I avoid tangles when I do it that way. And if I wanna change up my flies because I feel like something's not working properly, it's way easier just to clip that off and tie another fly on. All right, so for my lead fly, I've tied on a second fly with that lighter fluoro. And I like to go about 18 inches. I don't like them to be too close together. You know, you can even go two feet if you want. Having a little bit of extra space also lets you cut things back and reuse the line to tie on a different nymph. So nice, simple rig. There's my fly coming off of my point fly and then back up to the swivel. Now I like to use three aught split shot. You know, it's a good weight, but if I need more, I can always just double it up and I can attach that right above the swivel and that way it's not gonna slip on me any further down. <laughs> to sink it down and I'm gonna put it right above my swivel here and that way attaching it above the swivel it's not gonna slip down and go all the way down to the fly if I feel I need more weight I could certainly just add another split shot on there now when it comes to the indicator I've now got this whole leader section I can attach it to and I like these airlocks that we carry so the airlocks have this granted very easy to lose cap but you just gotta be careful you can get spares but I love that I can just slot the line right on there right through the airlock, clamp this back down, 
And what that's going to do is not only secure it in place, but also let me adjust it very easily for height. And when you are nymphing, this is key. You can't just set your indicator and then just fish all the water for the rest of the day the exact same way. You really want to be able to move this up and down, adjusting how deep those flies are going to go and making sure that you're on bottom, but that the indicator is still doing its job of letting you know what's going down below. All right, so that's the rig that I like to make up. I like that everything's in a line. It's nice and simple. It avoids actually a lot of tangles. And when you're starting out nymph fishing, you're gonna get tangled. This is gonna help alleviate some of that frustration. But I think the big benefits here are it's easy to tie, it's easy to change flies. I like that it's got that added weight to help things get down and it just keeps things all simple. As you cut back this fluorocarbon, you always have that swivel ready to go and tie some more on and start again. So you're never really gonna mess up your original leader in any way either. And again, these airlocks are going to make it easy to adjust the height, get that indicator where you need it. There's many ways to set up nymph rigs. This is just one possible way, but I think you should give it a try. It's a nice, simple way. It's strong and uh, it catches fish for sure. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll always have more educational stuff coming out very soon. Hopefully you found this helpful. I'm Chris from Bowery Trout Fitters. I'll see you again soon.